Hello, I'm Nisha Pandey and you're watching Prime Times News. Let's start with the headlines. CPN Mao Center leader Janadar Sharma reappointed as the Minister of Finance after the Parliamentary Special Committee failed to find any proof to prove allegations against him. Adenovirus infection in children increasing in Kathmandu Valley since the past two weeks. Number of patients to go to hospitals for test very high. Conflict victims and civil society members hold a sit-in at Maitikar today against an amendment bill registered at the Parliament Secretariat to amend the Enforced Disappearance, Truth and Reconciliation Act 2014. At least 25 people, including four children, dead after torrential rain swamped towns across Kentucky in the U.S. Number of people dead due to the flood in Iran reaches 59. Now news in detail. CPN Mao Center leader Janathan Sharma has been reappointed as the Minister of Finance. Issuing a press statement today, the Office of the President said Sharma has been appointed Finance Minister on the recommendation of Prime Minister Sher Bahadur Deoba as per Article 76, Subsection 9 of the Constitution of Nepal. Sharma had resigned from the post only on 6th of July after a parliamentary special committee was formed to probe allegations against him. He had been accused of involving unauthorized persons in the manipulation of tax rates on 28th of May, a few hours ahead of the announcement of the budget for the fiscal year 2022-23. The special committee submitted its report to Speaker Agni Prashad Sapkota on Friday, stating that it failed to find any proof to prove allegations against Sharma, thereby acquitting Sharma. Infection of adenovirus in children is increasing in Kathmandu Valley since the last two weeks. Daily, around 1,000 children go to children's hospitals for health checkups. After the increase in number of patients coming with symptoms of cold and fever, the virus has been confirmed when tested at the National Public Health Laboratory. The infection is mainly confirmed in school-going and young children. Due to the presence of patients in hospitals, patients are forced to wait in long lines just to get OPD tickets. The virus transmits from one person to another while sneezing, coughing or through feces, urine or tears of the infected person. Six hundred and twenty more COVID cases have been confirmed in Nepal in the past 24 hours with one death. Out of 2,651 PCR tests conducted throughout the nation, 496 were tested positive, whereas 124 were tested positive in 3,195 antigen tests reported the Ministry of Health and Population. With this, uh, the total number of active cases has reached 4,567. Out of them, 4,424 are isolating themselves at their home, whereas 143 have been isolated in institutions with 33 in ICUs. Similarly, five patients are being treated at ventilators. With the number increasing today, a total of 11,29,229 have been infected by COVID in Nepal. In the past 24 hours, 297 have been cured from COVID. With this, it's time for a short break. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Conflict victims and civil society members held a sit-in at Maithikar today against an amendment bill registered at the Parliament Secretariat to amend the Enforced Disappearance, Truth and Reconciliation Act 2014. The protesters demanded the government revise problematic provisions in the bill. According to them, though the amendment bill contains positive provisions including reparation, there are also many provisions that violate the victim's right to an effective remedy. Victims have lodged a complaint with the Cooperative Department against the management of Gautam Sri Cooperative Society in Kuleshwar, stating that they have fled away with the depositor's money. They gathered in the department today and filed a collective complaint. 
The victim said that although the management had informed the office would be closed for seven days, all of them have fled away and the money of the depositor has not been returned. Victims have complained that the cooperative chairman, Ram Bahadur Gautam and general manager Rabindra Bishta, among others, fled away with the depositor's mo national money of about 5.5 billion rupees. The victim said that after the directors fled away, Everest Bank sealed the cooperative. Cooperative Department has informed that they have already sent a letter to the Police Crime Investigation Office with a request to freeze the movable and immovable property of the Cooperative Society. Minister for Industry, Commerce and Supplies Dilendra Prashad Badu has stated that Nepal Oil Corporation will not be privatized. He said the Nepal Oil Corporation is supplying petroleum products with the assistance of the private sector and it will not be privatized, saying that the tax imposed on the petroleum products has been reduced. Realizing the government's responsibility, Minister Badu, however, said reforms in the Nepal Oil Corporation were needed even by reducing its unnecessary expenses. Stating that the government is ready to address the issues faced by the private sector, Minister Badu added that he was working to resolve the private sector's problems on policy and structural issues for the long term. Minister for Energy, Water Resources and Irrigation Pampa Bhushal today said that the government would revoke license of those hydropower developers that have reached a power purchase agreement and failed to start construction works. The government is ready to take necessary steps in encouraging actual promoters of hydropower, said the minister, while addressing a workshop with the theme of cross-border energy trade with focus on open access and transmission pricing, organized by the Society of Economic Journalists, Nepal. It's time for another short break. Please stay tuned for more news. Welcome back. Moving on to international news. At least 25 people died, including four children, when torrential rain swamped across towns in Kentucky in the U.S. Governor of Kentucky said that the number would likely rise significantly and it could take weeks to find all the victims of the record flash flooding. He said that it is an ongoing national disaster. Rescue crews continue the struggle to get into hard-hit areas, some of them among the poorest places in the United States. Crews have made more than 1,200 rescues from helicopters and boats, the governor said. Kentucky received between 20 to 27 centimeter, 8 to 10.5 inches in 48 hours. The weather offered a respite on Saturday, but more rain was expected on Sunday. Scientists have warned climate change in making weather disasters more common. President Joe Biden declared a federal disaster to direct relief money to more than a dozen Kentucky counties. The flooding extended into western Virginia and southern west Virginia. Governor Jim Justice declared a state of emergency for six counties in west Virginia where the flooding downed trees, power outages and blocked roads. Virginia governor also made an emergency statement enabling officials to mobilize resources across the flooded southwest of the state. As many as 53 people have been killed in the recent flash floods that caused havoc across Iran following heavy rainfall. Head of the Relief and Rescue Organization of the Iranian Red Crescent Society said that 16 people were still missing and 3,000 people have been provided with emergency accommodation. He said that another 1,300 people were transferred to safe places. He further said that the rescue operations are being carried out by 687 rescue teams, comprising 3,000 rescuers. Meanwhile, Iranian president on Friday ordered the ministers, heads of organizations and governors generals across the country to mobilize all the facilities to manage the possible floods, according to the presidential website. Last Saturday, it was reported that at least 22 people were dead and one went missing in the flash floods in southern Iran. The officials of the local Red Crescent Society aid group on Saturday confirmed the deaths and further said that 150 emergency responders, along with an aerial unit, working at the town 174 kilometer, that's 108 miles, east of the provincial capital. The floods happened on a summer weekend in Iran when families tend to head to cooler areas such as riversides, lakesides and valleys. Iran has experienced repeated droughts over the past decade, but the country has also faced floods in the region. Now sports updates.
In the third match of the group stage of the South Under-20 Championship, Nepal lost to India 8-0. With this, we have come to the end of the news. Before wrapping up, here are the headlines once again. CPN Mava Centre leader Janardhan Sharma Reap appointed as the Minister of Finance after the Parliamentary Special Committee failed to find any proof to prove allegations against him. Adenovirus infection in children increasing in Kathmandu Valley since the past two weeks. Number of patients to go to the hospitals for tests very high. Conflict victims and civil society members hold a sit-in at Maithikar today against an amendment bill registered at the Parliament Secretariat to amend the Enforced Disappearances, Truth and Reconciliation Act 2014. At least 25 people, including four children, dead after torrential rain swamped towns across Kentucky in the U.S. Number of people dead due to the flood in Iran reaches 59. That's it for tonight. Thank you for watching Primetime's News. Good night.